I'm Shamel Lane and welcome to a new series I'm running on my blog at Shamel.com called Saying Thanks and this month I'm all about trying to write lots of thank you notes and send thank you cards just taking the time to say thank you and I'm going to show some easy little tutorials on making handmade cards along the way. So this is the first card and what I wanted to address really early in January was what do you do when you have Christmas stamps and there's no more time to make Christmas cards. So I ordered this set which is called Two Birds in a Tree and it's by Hero Arts but it um, came in a little bit too late for me to make any Christmas cards because it arrived a few days after Christmas. So I still want to use it this year um, but I, I needed to think of something else I could do with it. And the idea of making Christmas cards uh, or Christmas making thank you cards with a Christmas theme works for me if I'm sending that thank you card for a Christmas gift or to the hostess of a Christmas party, something like that. So I'm going to make a few Christmas card, uh, thank you cards with Christmas motifs and this is one of them. I'm not going to use the Merry Christmas, I'm just going to use the big image of the tree with the birds. This sticks to a clear acrylic block. Um, and I'll get to that in just a second. Um, the trick with this technique is that you'll need two ink pads in the same color but different shades. So for this I used a light green and a dark green and for this I used a light blue and a dark blue. I'm going to use this same color combination and it's these two ink pads that I'm using. They're the Jenny Bolin for Ranger collection and the light blue is called Soap Powder and the dark blue is called Spice Tin. So I'm going to take some plain white cardstock and it's a smooth finish so you can stamp on it and it won't have any texture showing through the design. I'm going to take the light blue and go straight to the paper. Now I'm going off the edge onto my countertop because this is a countertop I can just spray and wipe clean. If your tabletop is something that you need to keep a little bit tidier, then use a plastic sheet or a craft sheet underneath. I just want to make a nice even blanket of color, so I'm just trying to get rid of any of those streaks. There we go. You can also do that with a blending tool, of course, but for a big expanse like that, it's really easy to just go direct to the paper. Then I'll let this dry for a little bit, and while I let that dry, it doesn't take very long at all because it's a dye ink. And I'll ink up this big stamp. Now, Jenny, oops, oh, sorry. Jenny Bullet ink pads are a little smaller than the usual ink pad. Let's see if I can give you a comparison. So they fit really easily in your hand, but it does mean that on a large stamp, you're going to want to take that ink pad in your hand and, and stamp onto the stamp rather than the other way around. And this stamp is one where instead of a line drawing, you're actually and filling in a big block of solid design and then the picture of the tree comes out in the negative. So there's quite a lot of ink. So that just means that I keep stamping until it's all covered and I'm looking to see if there are any lines from the corners of the ink pad and I just keep stamping until those are all gone. Just keep inking, inking, ink. Okay. And then I'll stamp straight on to the lighter blue background. Make sure that's pressed all the way around. The big block images take a little bit more time and pressure because you have to um, get all of the expanse down. You don't want a gap in the middle. So we'll see if I got that evenly stamped. That'll work. So I'll let that just sit into the paper for just a few seconds while I clean the stamp. And the Jenny Bullen inks come right off. There's no trouble at all, which I do. That's one of my favorite things about them. They're really easy to clean. And then because this is kind of a, a starry night or a, a snowy scene, I'm going to add some pearl to that and I'm going to use the Mr. Huey Calico Shine. It's just a clear pearl color and you can see on there perhaps. 
just shake that up and then spray right over the top. Once the mist has dried, I just cut the um, the stamp shape down to a rectangle with a little border that's roughly even around the outside. And I'll add a little bit of the dark blue to the edge. You can either do that straight to the ink pad or you can use an ink applicator, which is a little bit less messy, easier to control. But it's just whatever you prefer, whatever you have to hand. And then I have my card blank. Now what I want to do is, lay, is layer this up a little bit. So I'm going to add a cream colored cardstock border to this piece, but I also want to add some stamping to the background here. So you can see the difference. So this one is a solid background with no stamping at all. This one uses a chevron background pattern. And this time I'm going to use this kind of floralish design, which is a hero art stamp. Um, let's see if it has the name on it. It's called Dots and Flowers. <laughs> um, it's a slightly older stamp, but it may still be around. Or the idea is just that you, you can use any sort of background, but you just want something that's going to easily fill the whole card. And I'll tell you, I cheat a little bit, and that is that if it's something like this where the stamp is pretty much ex almost exactly the same size as the card. I stamp it and then if I end up with little gaps around the edges, I just go back and I trim the card and make it a little bit smaller. And if it's just a tiny bit, no one's ever gonna know and it just makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to ink this with a color that's very close to the same color of the cardstock. This is called brown sugar and it's an American Crafts pigment ink. So this stays wet a little bit longer and it's a bit more like a paint rather than just um, like the ink you would get out of a marker, which is what a dye ink is like. So I'll get that all even. And then place that, hold it tight, and turn it over. The other thing that is easy to do with a big stamp like that, rather than trying to turn it over without moving it, is to use it just straight up like um, without turning it over and use a brayer over the top. But unfortunately, I have um, left my brayer somewhere else at the moment, so I'm just going to do it this old-fashioned way. I'll show you the brayer another day, promise. I'll get it back. Okay, let's see if I moved it. Ah, all right. So it's just a very faint design because of the, the light color. And this is a bit more delicate pattern than this one. So where this was quite a, a thick block, you can see that a little bit more. And I've managed to hit all of those edges, but not quite this one. So I'm just gonna trim a tiny little bit off the top. So I'll take about a quarter of an inch off the top of that. Now to get a little bit of shading here, I'm just going to use some brown distress ink. You can use any dye ink, and but just like I did the blue ink around the edge of the blue box, I'm going to add brown ink around the, both the cream and then the outside of the card. Now, there's one last step to this, and that's adding the sentiment. And for my kind of thank you message on this one, I'm using a set from Technique Tuesday, which has all these different words, and I'm going to use the one that says, you are the best. Now, these are really delicate, and you don't have to press very hard. And sometimes um, I don't stamp them quite perfectly. So what I do is I don't stick this to the card until I have this right, because then I get more than one chance. I can always turn the card over and start again. So um, I'll just grab the blue, dark blue ink again. Yep. I will put this on here because then it helps keep it flat rather than turning. And 
and I'm just looking through the clear stamp to make sure it looks like all the different elements of the letters have hit the paper and then pick it up rather than doing any hard pressing and that's how it will come out clean. So that one I got on the first chin so that was good. Doesn't always happen. <laughs> and so then I can add my adhesive and add this over the top. For a really simple card. And then you can add more to this if you want. You can tie um, ribbon or twine around this element. You can add some stars on pop dots. All sorts of various different things that you can add to the design to um, make it a bit fancier. Or if you think this card is going to someone that would appreciate just nice, clean, and simple, you can leave it like this, write your message inside, and off you send it. So um, thank you very much for joining me for the very first video in saying thanks, and I hope you will come back and watch some more and craft more with me. Thanks for watching.